Elixir's biggest weakness is that it's not type safe. But luckily, there are three features built into the language that can help us simulate type safety. So we can make debugging our code way faster. Those three features are structs, pattern matching, and guard clauses. I'm going to show you how to use these three features to simulate type safety. So let's get started. Here I have a very simple function that just adds a book to a shopping cart. And this function is not type safe. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if I run the function, it seems to work. Everything seems to be fine. But what if the ID provided was a number rather than a string? And the thing is, we're expecting a string. If I run it, it seems to work. It tells us that we're out of stock when in reality, we should have gotten some kind of error because this is an invalid type. So now that's problem one. What about problem two? If we send an empty string? Well, it seems to work just fine as well. We get that empty string plugged in. And this could be a problem for a lot of reasons. Like what if further down in our application, these books uh, get added to the database and now we have an empty string added to the database. So I prefer to get my errors early on in the process so I can fix them right away rather than dealing with them later when I find them. So then there's a third issue here. What if our product manager says they want to add a new feature and they want to add discounts by author, for example? So, well, looking at this function, I can see it takes a book, but I don't know what the structure of this book is. Does the book have the author on it? So can I get book.author or is it book.author.id, um, I don't know, and is the ID a string or a number? Well, it's hard for me to create this feature discounts by author when I don't know this data, which means I have to go digging through the rest of the code base or look at the database to figure out what these types are. And that creates a lot more friction for us as developers. Luckily, though, there are the three features I mentioned earlier, structs, pattern matching, and guard clauses that we can use to make this type safe. So let me show you how that's gonna work. First, let's add a struct here. That's gonna help us identify the structure of the book. So we can add another def module up here called book, capital book. And then we can define a struct with def struct and give it a list of all of the fields that should be on the struct. It's going to be ID, title, and author ID. And this is great. This helps us see the structure and answer some of these questions down here. But we can take it a step further and actually enforce that these keys are on the book when creating it. Enforce keys and then provide it that same list. Perfect. And then down here, we actually want to match on that book struct. And if we reevaluate, everything's looking good. And we reevaluate here and we can see that we're getting an error. So basically, it's not matching because we're not providing it a book struct. So let's go ahead and update this. So this is a book. Click reevaluate, and we get an error message saying that the author ID was not provided. This is a good thing. This helps us ensure that all of our different variables are on the struct on the map when we're creating it. So let's go ahead and add that author ID. The problem is we still don't know if the author ID should be a string or a number. But luckily, we can solve that problem with pattern matching and guard clauses. Let's add some type checking to our function. Now, we can do that with pattern matching and guard clauses. So let's pattern match off the different uh, variables that we're expecting to get here. So we're expecting the ID, the title, and the author ID. And now that we're pulling those off, we can put an underscore here because we're not going to be using the book anymore. And we can add a when and then say is binary. So is binary checks if a variable is a string. So here we can say 
ID should be a string, and the title should also be a string, and our author ID should also be a string. And now I can do some formatting. So there we go. Now, the nice thing here, and oh, we can now get rid of the book.title because we are pulling that off and the book.id, we can just use that directly and title directly. The nice thing here is when you're looking at this function, you know that the ID is a string because of this check and the title is a string and the author ID is a string. This makes things so much easier, especially if a different engineer were to come look at our code later, they know exactly what the author ID is. So that would answer this question here for us. Now let's run our function. So we get an error message, which is good. It's a step in the right direction because now we know something is going wrong instead of before the error wasn't even showing up. It seemed like it was working, but this is saying uh, no function clause is matching. So we can make this error message better. Let's add another function by the same name. And if this matches, then we know that we have an invalid type at this point. So we can actually raise an error and say an invalid and let's go ahead and run this again and there we go we get a a better error message that's going to help us dig in and understand that hey our author id should actually be a string and if we run it with a string now it's working so the last thing i want to fix is that we still have the outstanding issue where if we pass an empty string and run this code it still appears to work and i want this to be type safe and null safe so i want this to throw an error so we can make that happen with pattern matching and guard clauses as well so if we go ahead and add another instance of our function and then we pull off the ID, for example. We can add a when ID in and say whether it's nil or an empty string, then we want to raise an error and say that the book ID is missing. And we can do this same thing. I'll duplicate that and we can do that with the title as well. As well. and the author ID. And then just come up here and change this to the title and this to the author ID. Now, if we reevaluate, and what's my error that I have here? undefined variable ID. Oh, that's my mistake. I need to change it there as well. Title, and then here should be author ID. Reevaluate. There we go. Now, if I run this, we should see a good error message. Yes. So the book title is an empty string. Book title is missing. So that's all that I wanted to show you today. So this is a good way that you can take Elixir and simulate type safety. It's not perfect type safety like um, a language like Golang or Java, but it's pretty dang close and it gives really good error messages and makes the code a lot more readable for other engineers that are gonna take a look at this. So hopefully you found this helpful. Happy coding and Godspeed.